Hello Cancers! I was feeling a little bit sick so I had to wait until you know my energy is a little bit better before I'd start on the reading because um, I feel like for December for a majority of the signs is a major major um, turning point in a lot of people's lives and so we have like repeating cards that came throughout you know the various readings for different signs so I was trying to make sure that um, my energy level is on par before I could start the reading okay so I apologize for the delay I apologize for getting this out late to you I still hope the information is still helpful for you moving forward um, I'm going to relay the initial messages that came through when I was shuffling and then we're going to go into this spread. It's basically the same spread, same um, amount of cards that I've used in the past. I just wanted to save time off the recording and you know to prevent uh, the distractions from shuffling while I get the messages out to you. So uh, the first thing I feel is for those of you who have recently like um, you know, um, either had new children added into the household who might have given birth and um, who might have like just um, a new bundle of joy in the environment. I feel that you're getting used to the swing of things. A lot of the energy surrounding your household environment has settled. And I feel that you're finding ways to manage responsibilities, practical real world responsibilities better. Or at least you're getting into the rhythm of things where you're... Um, I feel like you're you're just finding better, efficient ways to manage responsibility so that um, you know other areas of your life is not affected by it. Okay, so that looks to be very good for a lot of you. Um, I still see a lot of movement and travel, but it's diminished compared to the past four months. So I feel like the energy surrounding your overall work environment is looking a lot better as well. Um, I do see some concerns when it comes to health. Um, either like physical health or emotional health I do feel like more on the emotional health front um, take care to like you know get proper sleep um, get a new mattress I feel for some of you there is still some experiencing like um, I, I feel like back pain and especially pain in the lower extremities legs joints pain like hip pain back pain um, so that's coming in and I feel like you know if you can invest in a new mattress or you can find a better way to um, just get more comfortable, get more situated, like um, get yourself situated well before you go to sleep. I feel that's going to be beneficial for you. Um, I do feel, you know, uh, going to a chiropractor and things like that might be beneficial for you as well. I see acupuncturist and chiropractic like sessions. I feel those things would be really good for you. Uh, a lot more physical exercise as well, like a lot more physical ac activities because I do see an energy of stagnation, um, metabolism slowing down for many of you. So if you are lifting weights, for example, make sure you don't uh, strain yourself because I, I do feel like some sore muscles and things like that. General like physical malice like uh, that, that might prevent you from getting adequate rest or adequate sleep or even restful sleep okay so um, keep your health in order and when it comes to your mental health issues um, I feel overall reduction in alcohol consumption being careful about you know not wearing yourself thin when it comes to social engagement and setting some type of a schedule when it comes to your nighttime activities, um, going to sleep at a certain time, and just, you know, um, control physical exertion. Don't push so, f so hard that you are straining your body, okay? So that's coming in. Um, I feel for some of you, especially like um, if you are still in school, um, I do sense that you really need to, you know, get yourself focused. I do see a scatter energy. For those of you who are in school, managing school and responsibilities and work, and then for others, managing like, um, you know, I I'm feeling like for especially younger people who are viewing this, like people in their 20s who are still in school, you have to manage um, social engagement and the time that you spend studying for courses, uh, studying for exams, okay? So just be careful about that. Don't uh, overdo things. 
So um, I feel like there's a lot of regrets coming through when it comes to education for many of you in general. So some of you might not have the opportunity to finish school and I feel that you are starting to realize how it's really affecting your income generating potential or even affecting your financial and job prospects um, right now. So if you have not had the opportunity to finish school for whatever reason, financial or even, you know, personal, um, I sense a little bit of regrets and, you know, some... Uh, some type of disappointment coming through not having the opportunity to finish school and not getting the credential that you feel you deserve. So that's coming in. Um, what I'm also feeling is they are saying this is a month for you to withdraw, okay? And I feel a lot of it has to do with the fact that, you know, the, the sun is going in into, um, well, the sun is already in Sagittarius, in the constellation of Sagittarius, which is a fire sign. So I do feel that um, there's a lot of energy brewing around you. People want to go out. People want to overdo things because Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter and it deals with expansion. So along with expansion, expansion it comes an energy of overindulgence overdoing and um, pushing past our limits uh, in a very unhealthy manner and because the Sun is in a fire sign which is in opposition to yours a water sign I feel like you need to be very very self-contained this month in order to get your responsibilities done in order not to stress yourself out and not to go through you know physical overexertion so just be careful about that I feel like physical emotional and mental overexertion so that's a, a major thing coming through for this month okay Draw back your energy. Take care of things. Uh, there will be a time and a better, even a better time for you to get involved in group activities if that's something that you really want to do, like uh, socially network, professionally network. That will come later. Just contain your energy. Take care of things on a more logical, practical level. Um, the last message that is coming in is um, um, I, I just feel for a lot of you, there are concerns when it comes to family, okay? So this is like the family that you grew up in and the family that you uh, you either have created for yourself. There's a lot of pressure, I feel, to... Um, I, I feel like, especially for those of you who are married with children, um, there's a lot of pressure. And I, I'm not really sure like where it's coming from. Either not seeing eye to eye with your partner and then you have to put on this happy face around the children, right? So I, I feel like a lot of you are kind of like dealing with that. And um, you're not really sure. Uh, you, you don't want it to affect the kids. But at the same time, I feel like you're there's this general dissatisfaction and you're trying to, you know, put on a brave face in front of the kids. And then for others of you, uh, without your own family, I feel like there's a lot of expectations when it comes to mom and dad. You might be either estranged, uh, estranged from one parent. So it might be the mother that you don't have a great relationship with. It might be the father that you don't have a great relationship with. I do see more of a father vibe, like um, expectations coming through from the father that you can't realistically live up to. Um, I feel that there might be like an emotional rift between you and a father figure. So you might be home for the holidays seeing your parents and, you know, you might not get along with one parent and you're trying to put on a brave face, you know, like a happy giddy face in order to confront situations. So I do feel a, an energy of like, you know, making the best out of a situation and, you know, trying to find ways to, um, to keep yourself like, um, to, to keep yourself in a happy state in an environment that is not entirely ideal. So I, I feel that can be, you know, a good or a bad thing, but I, I do feel emotional management is a major theme for this month for many of you. Let me see if there's anything else. Um, there is, they're saying there is discussions about, you know, travel and, and things like that. I don't feel the traveling is going to happen this month. I don't see a big shift here about, you know, traveling. But I, I feel that a major, major travel, possibly overseas, possibly across state lines, across the continent even, or to neighboring countries if you are in an environment where you're surrounded by other countries. So 
I feel like um, major travel opportunities are being planned or are being thought about right now. And the travel could come very early on next year, like in the springtime. I'm getting March, April, and May in uh, of next year. Um, so I'm going to go into your reading now. Uh, let's talk, talk about the first two cards. So first of all, we do have the Emperor as well as the Three of Wands. Now... Both of these cards to me indicate a situation like a work environment where I feel that you are um, put in an environment where you are, a lot of people are either depending on you and a lot of people are kind of like looking up to you for your expertise, for your, you know, voice of authority. Um, I feel that a lot of you are kind of like in an environment uh, and I feel like it's institutional. Um, you might be starting at the bottom and you're waiting for opportunities to advance and you're waiting for opportunities either to uh, get a promotion, to rise above, to do some type of lateral transfer, to even get a pay increase or a pay raise. And I feel like you're in an environment where there's a lot of people, you know, looking at your performance, not in a bad way, but they, it seems like you're dealing with a lot of authority figures. You're dealing with a lot of people that you have to please or you that, that might have, you know, creative differences from you. And you're trying to, so for example, you might have two supervisors, two trainers. One person wants you to do things this way. The other person wants uh, it done a, a, a different way. So I feel like you're kind of like caught in the middle and you're trying to like uh, see how you can maneuver or where you can maneuver the situation t as to not to uh, offend anybody okay and they're saying for this month I, like that whole emotional management idea I feel like you really need to do uh, uh, what you feel is the right thing for yourself or for the situation so don't um don't become, you know, like, um, don't be too eager to please one or the other because I feel like that's going to isolate one and the other person. So I feel like it's really important for you to do what you think is the best course of action given the entire circumstance or the entire situation. So trusting your intuition specifically coming through as well as uh, really standing up and take ownership for your creative projects, okay? So I feel like, you know, uh, there might be an, an energy of a micromanager in your midst, somebody who's constantly hovering over you and things like that, but I feel like you're going to navigate the environment just fine, and I feel like you know what you're doing. You have the skills and expertise, and a lot of you are actually very, very cautious, so you don't really act until you know for sure a certain course of action is going to provide the best outcome. So you know trust yourself a little bit more and you know put your ideas on the line as well and defend it okay uh with the emperor here it indicates as well a father figure so that energy came through strongly um i feel like i feel like there is uh something that, that they're saying you know when it comes to like career status and things like that um a lot of you are in a uh, situation where uh, you might ha be making a lot of money, so your financial situation looks very good for this month. You may be making a lot of money. You might be in a position of power and authority. And I feel like, you know, a lot of you have fought really hard, have worked really hard to get where you are right now. And I feel like, yes, you have support from family members and things like that. But I feel like somebody is trying to take credit for, you know, the work that you're doing. It could be as simple as, you know, going home for the holidays and then, you know, you're like the manager now and then your father might be bragging about you because, you know, he's proud of you to his colleagues, to his other family members or to his side of the family and taking credit for it. You know, like he I feel like he's proud of you. So he's doing this. But I feel that for you, it might rub you the wrong way because you're like, no, I got here on my own. And I feel like you did a lot of work on your own to get there. But I feel that, you know, this person feels almost as if you are an extension of them. So they're not doing this to be like pretentious or to like, you know, take credit for your work. They're doing it mainly because they're proud of you. And the way in which they express their um, their pride or the way they, that they express their appreciation for you might be done in a way where it's not like really humble or it's not very 
it's not very tactful. So I feel like that might rub you the wrong way, especially those of you who have like a, a strained relationship with a father figure, okay? Um, the next two cards coming through is the Eight of Cups as well as the Six of Wands. Let me talk about the Six of Wands first. This is a card about garnering a lot of prestige, a lot of power, a lot of um, recognition on the professional and even the social environment. And um, I do sense for a lot of you, there is, they're saying here, you're trying to do the right thing, okay? And you're trying to do what you feel is like morally right. And I feel that, you know, everyone, um, it seems to me like there is a major loss that came as a result of trying to do the right thing. And I feel like this can play out in a relationship as well. So an example that comes to mind, I feel is like, for example, you know, like, um, being like dating two people and you have to let one person go mainly because you can't, um, you don't want to hold them back. You don't want to lie to them anymore. So in, in the process of doing the right thing, you lost that relationship. Right. And I feel like on the uh, professional front as well, um, you might have to like, uh, you might be in a supervisory managerial position and you might have to take those, um, you know, you, you have to like make those difficult decisions. Kind of like this person on my team is not carrying their weight. So I'm going to have to let them go. And I'm going to have to like hire somebody else to replace them that can do the job better. So I definitely feel like uh, with you, there might be uh, uh, the whole concept of trying to do the right thing. And um, not being too happy about having to do it. I feel that you're still doing it. You're still, you know, trying to walk the moral path. But it comes at a loss, like some type of emotional loss that is kind of irreversible. And then for others of you, I feel like if you're in a position of authority on a work environment, especially, you might have to make the, the tough call of letting somebody go and having to deal with, you know, the resentment coming through from them. But in the process, I feel like it's for the greater good, mainly because they are kind of like a weak link and you and your team can benefit a lot better if you were to replace them with somebody else. So I do sense that coming through where, you know, tough choices are made. It's a, it indicates to me like a whole process of maturation where, you know, with greater responsibilities, um, uh, with greater um, power, with greater obligate, like with greater power, greater position, greater prestige, it also comes with you know greater responsibilities. If you're in the public limelight for whatever reason, if you are somebody who is like a politician, working in environment that deals with like public policy. Uh, governance or even like um, in the public sector if you are somebody in the public eye and I feel that you know you you have to walk on the straight and narrow path and it's really difficult for you like to um, to maintain this kind of like facade all the time so I feel like you know um, because you have gained this position of importance and prominence it is really important that you conduct yourself well, mainly because you're under a lot of scrutiny. A lot of people are looking at you as a role model as well. So you can't really, you know, I feel like a lot of you are not comfortable in this position. Uh, you feel that it's necessary in order to implement some type of major changes in society. So you get into this type of position where you can manage people, you can train people better, you can teach people how to do the right thing. But I do feel like when it comes to your public image and your emotional life or even your personal life, it's really hard to manage the two because you don't want to be seen as somebody who has like double standards for yourself and for other people. So because you're under a lot of scrutiny and you're in the spotlight, you have to conduct yourself so well. So you have to like hide certain things about yourself, not in a malicious, deceitful way, but mainly because you feel like this is the professional image I must portray. As for my personal emotional life, I need to put that on the back burner or I need to like downplay that, that side of myself. So I feel that coming through this um, disparity between, you know, public image and uh, personal life. Um, I feel that it's good and I feel that, you know, a lot of you are under, 
in positions of of power of authority and so you have to like really watch what you say really watch what you do really watch who you hang out with associate with to avoid scandal to avoid um avoid like gossip and so you're very careful about you know um concealing information about your private life mainly because you feel this area is sacred to you so it could also be like, you know, um, disassociating yourself from people that you used to hang out with, mainly because to avoid scandal or to avoid, you know, being tr traced back to them in some way and not frequenting the areas that you're used to or that you really like because there is like certain stigma associated with it. So not doing something that you used to like or you, you still like because you have to preserve a public image okay so i see a lot of um a lot of cards here about you know high power career corporate types of professional that have to downplay a certain side of themselves in order to fit into a mold in a professional setting and i feel like yes yes you're going through the motions but you feel like it's not very authentic to your true um representation like i don't feel it's it's truly you but you're playing a role, and I feel that you understand the importance of needing to do to do this. Okay. Uh, what I'm also feeling as well is um, with the third cluster here, we have the Hermit and the High Priestess, and I want to talk about these three cards in particular. And um, what I do sense here, these are very very spiritual cards. Well, even the Temperance card, these are very very spiritual cards, and um, the high priestess indicates heightened intuition the hermit indicates your spirit guys trying to connect with you it's basically you know crowning this reading so it's something that you are thinking about something that is happening around you and i feel like you're being steered a, a specific way and i feel that you're you're being steered towards like a moral righteous path and I feel a lot of you are just kind of like, um, in the past, you might have done some things that are questionable in order to get to a position of prominence, in order to achieve success and financial stability. So whatever you were doing, there's an element here about having to do something in order to achieve greatness. And whatever you did, you might not have really liked it. Okay, so that means that can even be as simple as being in a work environment that you don't really care for in, uh, in order to, you know, stay there, gain seniority, get a promotion, have that financial stability. Others of you might just be like, you know, you might become doctors and lawyer because it was expected of you from your father or from your family, but you don't, your heart's not in it. So it could be like that. And on the other extreme, it could be, you know, shady dealings, under the table dealings in order to get something that will garner you a lot of wealth. So it can play out in a myriad of ways and it can play, uh, uh, it depending on the magnitude of what was done in order to get yourself here. I do feel like a lot of you are questioning it. A lot of you are just like, is this something that is morally right? Is this something that is ethical? So I do see this whole element about, you know, what the public wants uh, versus what I want. And uh, these things... Uh, they're at cross purposes with each other almost. So you're kind of like grappling with this inner dilemma. Like I, I feel like it's an inner conflict. It almost feels like an ethical dilemma about like, should I continue on this route? Am I on the right path? And if this is something that is good for me further down the line. Um, I'm seeing that some of you might be in a position where you are meeting a lot of clients. And I feel like I feel like the, the clients that you're meeting, they have very, very extravagant tastes. They uh, might engage in a lot of, you know, like frivolous activities like um, going out, um, dropping a lot of money in order for, for like entertainment, okay? I'm going to leave it at that. That can mean many, many things, but I feel like... I feel like you're you're kind of burned out with having to maintain this professional image. You're kind of burned out of having to maintain um, a specific like personage, I guess, in front of your professional context. And you feel like it's not really representing you. It's not the lifestyle that you really want for the rest of your life. And it's not something that you want to pursue because you feel like it's inauthentic. Okay. 
And um, with the Hermit energy, this is kind of like your spirit guides telling you, like, uh, looking into the success situation. So it fell out like this with kind of like, this indicates to me looking into in depth into a situation. And we have the success card here. So it's sort of like, yes, you gain the success, you gain the power and the prestige, but at what cost? Are you still... Uh, happy with your station? Are you still happy with this job? Are you still happy with these, um, I almost want to say like superficial relationships that you are establishing that might not serve, that might not uh, represent you, that, you know, outside of this work environment, you, you feel like this is not you. So there's a serious reassessment when it comes to a career track, I feel, for some of you. And especially uh, for those who are, you know, like, um, kind of like at the peak of your career, I feel like you're thinking about the next step. There's a sense of boredom, discontentment coming through. Even if you're at the peak of your career, I feel that you're waiting for new opportunities. However, you don't want to move away from where you currently are, like professionally, because there's a lot of money coming through. There's high status, high power, high money. So you might be, you know, wanting to make a career move. And I feel that you're being steered to make a career move. But you're comfortable where you are because, you know, of the, the leadership capacity, because of the status, because of the position, okay? So major career moves are highly supported, actually. I feel like you're being steered in that manner. And especially, I, I feel like for some of you, um, within the past, within the past, like, let, let's just say like in 2015, I feel like a lot of you made a lot of money and you might have lost it all. Okay. So I feel like they're saying something about, they're, they're saying something about, you know, um, money built on karma. So I feel what that means is kind of like, you know, in universal law is just, you get back what you put in, no matter what it seems like at the end of the day, at the end of our lives, whatever we put in when it comes to emotional investment, when it comes to like the time, the energy, the, um, and especially the energy on an energetic level, whatever we put into an endeavor throughout our lives, we're going to get it back. Okay, so it's a it's a mutual energy exchange between ourselves and other people, between ourselves and a work environment, between ourselves and our the universe. So I feel like money that is gained very, very quickly can disappear very, very quickly. And I feel that a lot of you might have like been on top of the world doing something quite um I don't know if it's like immoral or unethical and you might have had been in a situation where you lost it all. And I feel like if, if that were, you know, if that was something that happened to you, they're saying that, you know, there is a, a way to build it back up, but you need to make sure that the way in which you approached, you know, rebuilding your foundation, you need to make sure that it's a different way. You need to make sure that it is something that is tried and true and built on hard work rather than, you know, overnight success. Okay. So I sense that coming through. Um, a lot of you are going through like a major, major spiritual month for this year where you are reassessing a lot of what you've been doing and whether or not it's going to sustain you till the end of time because I feel an overall sense of boredom, dissatisfaction. It feels to me almost like going through the motions, um, having a lot of things on your plate, going through the motions, but the emotional satisfaction is no longer there so it, it feels like you're living your life based on other people's expectations rather living it authentically based on what you want out of life so um in a way it's sort of like emulating other people's success rather than charting your own territory and figuring out what success and happiness and things like that really mean for you um so the last cluster here deals with the temperance card and the nine of swords and the Nine of Swords is a card about, you know, sadness, regrets as well. It's about sleepless night, being plagued by nightmares, not getting enough sleep, not getting adequate rest, or even restful sleep. This is a card about tossing and turning in the night. And I feel like a lot of you are getting spiritual insights. 
um, I feel like spirits, um, this is your spirit guide trying to guide you in the right direction. And I feel like, especially for those of you who are starting from the bottom and you're trying to rise into a position of prominence, you're trying to secure enough money, enough funding in order to get uh, some type of venture off the ground. I do see a lot of work, like, you know, you're being overloaded with a lot of work. There is a high propensity for burning out, so if you're not careful, okay? So just keep that in mind and take care of yourself. Get recreational, you know, activities in to diffuse the tension when it comes to, like, inundate, being too inundated with work that you don't really care for. And on top of that, having a lot of responsibilities on your plate, I feel like a lot of you, they're saying something about new additions to the family. So if you have like younger children, especially um, who's like teething or, you know, it's like um, a child that cries a lot at night, you're not used to it. You're trying to adjust your schedule. So I feel like a lot of um, sleepless nights or like waking up in the middle of the night in order to take care of the little kids. Okay, so that is something that you need to manage and I feel like you're gonna, going to be able to successfully manage it but I feel like a lot of work-life balances a lot of personal professional life balance where you both can be cordial with one another and there isn't like a great deal of resentment and uh, you know in that separation so I feel like in the past a lot of you have been with this person either in a short-term romance or in a very very long-term romance I do feel for some of you that might have been with this person, it might have been like, um, you know, six years or less, okay, six months or less. So I feel like it's somebody quite recent, somebody that is still heavily kind of like, um, I feel like you know they're a good person. But for some reason, the timing between you both were, were just never in, in sync, in alignment. So I feel like you were dealing with this person and you have since moved away from it. Uh, what I'm sensing is with you and this person you know you're a water sign and I feel like cancer people in general need a lot of reassurance need a lot of emotional support you need a lot of validation affirmation and you need a lot of compliments from your partner not because you're fishing for compliments but because it makes you feel wanted and needed and it makes you feel secure and I feel like this person um, is not somebody that gives out compliments easily. I do sense like emotional repression with this person. Um, and as a result of it, like it's hard to be in a relationship with them if you're somebody that needs a lot of attention, that needs a lot of coaxing, coddling. So I feel like they're very, very stoic and they have been through, you know, a lot of pain and struggle and strife in their own life. So they're not they're not like ready to take on you know to to play the that maternal role to another person so that's what I'm feeling here and as a result of it there were difficulties communicating there were difficulties seeing eye to eye there were difficulties when it comes to like gauging how much they really care about you and I feel like you have you or them have chosen to move on from this relationship and I feel a relationship that was quite significant uh, six years or less and six months or less with this person even though it's six months or less they're still showing up here which brings us to the present situation in the present situation we have here the ace of wands and the ace of wands indicates passion indicates excitement it indicates like you know chemistry with another person the Ace of Wands, because it's a fire suit, it indicates our passion, our drive being ignited, okay? But alone, it doesn't indicate love or it do doesn't indicate stability. It's just a very, very quick burst of passion. Uh, coupled with other things, it can last, but still, it needs a lot of nurturing, okay? So all Aces are like the beginning of a, a fruitful union. It can work out depending on how much energy, how much resources, how much emotional investment you want to put in it. So I feel like you're still, um, I feel like a lot of you, you have moved on from this person. You have found somebody else. A lot of you might have shifted from an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra to a fire sign. Um, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. And I feel that because you met this new person, you were able to leave that significant relationship partner behind and you're able to like accept the fact that, you know, yes, it was great at one point, but I've moved on. And I feel as well, a lot of you are feeling new excitement, new passion for a new person. And you know that 
like there aren't you know right off the bat there aren't a lot of compatibility but it's exciting and it's stimulating and I feel that you're willing to put in the work to invest in this because you want that excitement you want to feel you know the jitters of a new love relationship again um, some of you can have you know multiple options meaning like multiple suitors and so I feel that you are at least dating again but a lot of you, I feel, are coming through in this month with a relationship. So the foundation indicates to me um, what's known to be true in this present moment as we you know, progress into December. We do have here the Ten of Pentacles, which indicates a very, very stable, solid foundation. Two people that have worked together to build a uh, generational wealth, to build up and accumulate a lot of wealth and stability in the relationship. So a lot of you might have already, uh, might enter this month already in a coupled relationship that has a lot of stability and growth. If you are already in a relationship that is very, very stable and very solid, I feel like you might be coupled up with an earth sign, okay? A Taurus, a Virgo, or a Capricorn. Sun, moon, or rising. And I feel like both of you on the professional front, you're a very good match. Like on paper, you know, one person, for example, one person's a lawyer, the other person's a doctor. That is like a good match. It's a good social match. And then a lot of you might be like from the, um, um, you know, upper middle class upbringing and then the other person's upper middle class upbringing so there seems to be something of a good match in this union so i feel like on the public front like on paper the union looks very stable very very good but i do see some type of competition between you and your partner about you know who's making more money i do see some element of like a little bit of envy a little bit of competition and a little bit of like um nitpicking at one another this is something that you really want to sort out in your relationship because i feel like it's chipping away at the foundation at the foundation of the relationship on the one hand you have somebody who's very very stable you know like the earth sign taurus virgo capricorn it is somebody who's very reliable who will be there for you like in the middle of the night if you need anything but i do feel like there's an element here of like the relationship looking very very good on paper it might be like overly stable to the point where uh you might be you know wanting new things okay so i do see temptation i do see all of that especially if you are in a relationship with an earth sign What's coming through as the crowning energy? And the crowning energy is the person, the situation, or the circumstance that you are thinking about. We have here the devil. And the devil indicates to me, uh, first of all, temptation outside of the relationship. And I do feel as well, a lot of you, um, you're feeling like, you know, you're feeling frisky. You're feeling like you want to take risks. And I feel like you have a lot of people that are admiring your work. So you might be in a very high power status or like position. And I feel that a lot of people are admiring you. You have a lot of suitors coming through. A lot of people just like randomly messaging you, uh, looking at you through social media. And I feel they're reaching out to you. So I see a lot of uh, an energy about, you know, I, I see like a, a Cancerian male who has like a, a bunch of women following him, okay? So for example, I feel like somebody with a groupie, somebody with like a lot of admirers. And I feel like it's, it's yes, it's flattering and it can be harmless if you know how to manage that energy. But I feel like it is posing as a major temptation for many of you. So especially if you're dealing with an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, this energy can come through from their end where I feel like there might be some control issues. There might be a little bit of um, jealousy, resentment coming through from the earth sign. And I feel like there's a sense of competition as well. So there's some type of temptation coming through in this environment, especially if, for those of you who are coupled up. And for others of you, you are dealing right now with a fire sign. So you might have transitioned from an air sign to a fire sign. And you're still with a fire sign right now. And there's temptation from outside of the relationship.
So I feel like you're in a very, very spirited mood and you want to take risk. And I feel like there's a lot of uh, people soliciting you from outside the relationship or if, if you're single even, there's a lot of temptation coming through. And the advice here is if you are thinking about a fire sign, uh, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo specifically, I feel almost like they're not really making a move towards you. They're seeing all the people in your midst and they're seeing like all the competition that they have to jump through, you know, they have to get through. So they're not really um, excited about having to make the first move. So I feel like you're dealing with a very hesitant fire sign. So which brings us to the um, future position. In the future position, we do have here the Eight of Cups as well as the Tower. So be very careful about, you know, like when I mentioned, if you are competing with somebody and if, you know, somebody's like, if there's temptation outside of the soulmate connection and it's not going to be sufficient for you to be happy. So they're telling you to really fix the foundation of your current relationship if you're not happy because the person that you're with right now, they're very, very stable. And especially for those of you who have moved away from one person are now, you know, like just dating around and having fun. I do feel that if that's you, I feel that there is um, a process of like narrowing down your options and being with somebody that you really, really care for. Okay, so that's coming through, especially if you're not in a serious relationship. But those of you in serious relationship you want to stick with your partner because I feel like they're very good. They're very, uh, they seem very reliable, very faithful. There's some control issues, but you can definitely talk to each other, work around that energy. Okay. Please don't make any drastic decisions for this month when it comes to your relationship, because I feel like you're operating from a space of temptation and not so much like, um, real, uh, deep spiritual, like insights when it comes to your relationship. So don't make any decisions right now. Okay few things out. Mercury and retrograde uh, time periods are also good for fixing problems in existing relationships as well. So if something keeps coming back up every four months, the same argument keeps coming back up in a relationship, that's something for you to really hash out with your partner. Okay, so take it easy, cancers, um, pull back your energy, focus on your relationship and really try to fix it if there are recurring problems. Okay, uh, singles, I feel like you're in a good space to meet somebody that is really, really good for you. I feel very strongly it might be, um, I feel like it might be another water sign. Fire sign and water sign, I feel, are coming through very strongly for stability, okay? So water signs, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, another water sign like yourself. And then um, the, the fire sign, especially if you're single and if you're like wanting to meet people, I do see fire sign coming through as well. Uh, the earth sign might be somebody that you're already in a relationship with.